Ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the March meeting for the Ralph Lowndes County Zoning Board of Appeal. For those of you that may have never been here, let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Someone from staff will come to the lectern and give us the proposal that is being requested. Once they have presented the information, in addition to the packets of information that we have, there possibly will be discussions and or questions among board members to staff. Once we feel like we have heard that uh, position satisfactorily, I will ask if there are any persons here in support. If you are here and in support, you're welcome to come to the lectern. We need your name and address for the record. Please tell us what you wish to have us to take into consideration concerning what is being requested. If there are multiple people here, we would like to get your information. The only thing that we ask is please don't come up and give us the same information two and three and four times. One time is enough. If you have information you feel like has not been brought to our attention, please, we'll give you a chance to come to the uh, lectern again, give me your name and address for the record, and give us the benefit of the information that you would like us to have. <coughs> Once we have heard that side, there could be additional questions or discussions among the board members. Once we have heard what we feel like is that side, then I will ask if there are any parties here in opposition, or if there are any parties here that feel like they need clarification as to what is being requested. Again, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you want us to take under advisement. We do need everybody here to please sign in on the back table so that we have a record of your presence for the minutes. We have copies of the agenda back there as there well. There are agenda <laughs> copies if you need them back there. Once we have heard both sides of the issue, there could be additional discussions and or questions among board members or staff. Once we feel like we understand what is being requested in both sides, if there are two sides, we generally will act today and render a decision. However, it is in the bylaws that if we feel like information is lacking or parties need to talk, then we do have the right as the board to postpone acting on it until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Rarely does that happen, but it does occasionally happen. Okay. The first case we're going to call is the Lowndes County case, VAR 2012-01, YFF Development, LLC, Johnson Road, South Williams, School Road, is the location. Good afternoon. This is a request by YFF Development for variance to Chapter 9 as it pertains to our non-conforming standards. Um, property consists of about 140 some odd acres. Um, and the applicant is requesting the variance so he can re establish a non conforming use. Um, in this case, the, the board will consider a request to Chapter 9, um, as Chapter 9 provides that a non conforming use for public structure or open use um, is discontinued or abandoned for 12 consecutive months. Um, in other words, you can go back and resume that use. The property was previously used for agricultural activities. In 2007, the applicant um, elected.
elected to change the zoning of the property from um, RA, which is residential agriculture, to a planned development um, for a proposed residential subdivision, consisting of both single family homes and multi family development. Before you, I placed a, an approved site plan of what the applicant had proposed in 2007. As all of us are aware, the, the economy um, just declined, the residential market for the, for the market declined, and the applicant has not developed the property as he um, intended back in 2007, and has, you know, as a result, lost his non-conforming activity, which was an agricultural operation. Um, the applicant said the property just sitting dormant, the applicant would like to um, put the property back to use for agricultural um, activity, but does not want to lose his planned development zoning. He would like to keep that PD zoning until such time the market avails itself for residential development. So that's the request before you today. Um, there was some debate among staff, county staff, um, and I think that the, well, the debate centered around the method by which the applicant should to um, in order uh, to perform this request. There were actually three ways the applicant could have done this. One way is the variance procedures before you today. Um, another way he could have done is to change the zoning from planned development back to agricultural. Um, a third option is that he could have amended his planned development zoning to reflect agricultural. Um, but he chose the variance option. So that's that's what Today. There was a recommendation from the TRC of denial, and the rationale um, for the recommendation was that, you know, they felt that the applicant should have gone to the Lyons County Board of Commissioners instead of this route. Um, I think, um, while I feel sure that there's no, there was no problem in the proposed use being agricultural, it's just a method by which the applicant so with that, that's the recommendation of the TRC for denial, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Okay, and prior to the zoning board and the Lowndes County Board of Commissioners granting the plan development request, it was agricultural use? It was zoned, um, actually it was dual zoning, it was RA, residential agricultural, and R1, the little portion of R1. And prior to the adoption of the UOUC, the property was on a U, agricultural use. So it had history of agricultural activity. And his plan, as we understand it, is to try to generate some kind of income to pay taxes or other expenses relative to this until such time as the economy turns around and he can go back to his original plan development plans that were already approved by the Lowndes County Commission. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Under the resumption of a, or reestablishment of a non-conforming use, he is still limited to agricultural use. He can't go in and do something else that is not agricultural. Is that, am I correct? That is correct. Um, and we can base that either on a condition um, set by the board or we can refer to this letter of intent. Now what we did receive um, is a site plan of some sort to show those areas that he would like to do the agriculture activity. Um, and it was a concern of mine that, you know, whatever activity that was done didn't infringe on those residences um, that were in that property. So in talking with the applicant, they're willing to you know, buffer, you know, get to a buffer or whatever the board deems necessary. And quite a bit of that area is wetlands, um, yeah. normal. Quite a bit of that property, I think in your map, there's a wetlands map. Right, so all of his wetlands and there's some of it. Quite a bit of wetlands. <laughs> so, I mean, he, he can't <laughs> logistically farm in there because his equipment's going to be stuck. Right. And, um, the other areas that I may have been looking in the wrong, I may not have known what the proper line where we would also see uh, forested areas that he's not going to 
be able to follow. It's like a far scenario, and you know, and there'll be more than I'm sure you can tell you all what areas they're interested in. I did want to mention, um, while I'm up here, I did receive a letter um, from an adjacent owner in opposition. I believe I'll put that in front of us all as well. All right. And as a point of clarification, should this board vote against the variance, he still can go to county commissioners and request option two or option three. So the, the door is not closed if this board should vote the other way instead of four. Right, that's correct. That's correct. Any other questions or discussions from the board at this time? I've got questions. When I read that there were the three different methods that they have chosen, I know that when these people come on to make these applications, they have to pay a fee. $615 is what I think I read. It seems like that at the time that they're making this application, either your office or the county commission office, somebody should be able to say at that point before they put down $615, you might be better served going in this direction than in this direction. I mean, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but $600 is $600 for me. And I mean, I just, I understand where y'all are coming from on your recommendation for denial, but it seems like that could have come up at the time that they made the application. And then they could have been better served by taking their money and going to a different group and saying, this is what we want to do. Actually, the copy, uh, the applicant was given for those options. Actually, to, to go for the Knox County Board of Commissioners is $600. The variance is $450. So we was given those, those options. Is that a rezoning? That would be Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? And that, that's what you mean by going to before the commissioners, is to go and ask for a rezoning. Rezoning or plan mm -hmm. amendment. Um, an amendment to their plan. I think that's worth clarifying today too. I, I spoke with um, with one of the neighbors out there yesterday evening, and I think she was under the impression that today's meeting would, would reverse their PD zoning. And I tried to make it clear that this was just a variance that would offer them some relief to be able to farm that land until such time that they wanted to come back and change that. So. For anybody who may be wondering, I mean, we're not here to make a decision on reversing the rezoning back to what it originally was, which seemed to be the case. From, like I said, some of the neighbors that I talked to. So, just as a point of clarification. I'll be more than happy to explain that. Anything, anybody else, or further discussion on that? Thank you very much. Is there anyone here in support of this application who would like to provide any additional information? Yes, my name is John Robinson. I'm here with 3227 St. Louis Park Lake Park. And I also want to represent it for Wyatt and also going partner with the farmer that wanted to farm the property down here. Uh, that property has a long, grown out history with a conflict with the county when we first started to bring investors into the city, in this county. We had brought, we had recruited investors to come to the city and the county that would invest in our community that we can enhance our economic ability to be able to do things on a different level and scale that we can get some jobs created in general. And somehow uh, the project was equal to the Kimberly because it was a planned division and it was already out of culture to be formed prior to this. And when we went before the Board of County Commissioners, they turned they rejected our project and they turned it down. They did not table it as it was taking everyone else. They put us off over a year that we couldn't get involved and we lost a lot of opportunities as to get subsidies for packing water in. But we had they had a thing for a million dollars that we could be part of all the other contractors around the area. They was included, but we was excluded. 
And so that set us back. And it's a good thing that it did set us back because the economy, the bottom dropped out the economy when we started building the laws. Now the property is just sitting there and, you're, and the, the issue that came up before the county, it, it, it seems really odd and strikingly odd that the county manager would come in and would get involved in, and make allegations as to the cake and ice cream deal that we wanted both ways. It's not that we wanted both ways. We need money, we know what the economy is like. We need money to get, help keep the place up. People go out there and hunt hunting out there on the area. And, and it's a residence around there. It's a possibility some child could get shot because we don't let it be grows and it's dumping money into something. So what we, what we request is that we be able to allow it to farm the place until uh, the guys, the, the economy, really helped out. So head farms, we have our neighbor Chris Head Jr. We got head farms, and we have the lease right here. And we went out and uh, wanted to lease the properties and farm the properties and perhaps be a potential purchaser of the properties and want to farm them. And but we don't want to see these people lose the value of a property that they, that they took that was underneath a million dollars and now where it was like five or six thousand bucks an acre and buy it and own as a club to lose it and it becomes at, at, at the market value of two hundred thousand dollars an acre by it being put into a foot. That would be ludicrous to come with that someone to change that type of value and we drop it down and it is commonly used. The property is just sitting there. And we 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 may we the view that to take into consideration that we don't want them to have to go back before the board of county commissioners that they want us to come back get the scriptures from that. And that's the position that we are taking. Um, I'm I'm John Robinson and maybe this might not have that much value on it, but I went before the Board of County Commissioners and explained to them that I had filed a federal charge against the city and the county. And I do personally feel that this is some form of retaliation in, in the slightest degree for us to be required to have to come back and probably just sit there. And I'm praying that that's not the case, but that's a possibility. And I want you guys to take into consideration that the land is sitting there and it's growing up. And it could, and we would take the best use of it. We could have limits on it as to what we can grow out there. Now we are planning on going peanuts, uh, corn, maybe uh, cotton or something of that nature that's coming from. We're not talking about yelling or accumulating no petroleum or anything out there that will make it messy out there. We want to try to keep it up because after all we want it to be a high standard, high quality as far as the first development and then the use of it in this manner. So if you guys would, please take under consideration uh, what I've been stating to this nature because we would really like to perform it. Right. Any questions or discussions? Just entertain me a moment. Um, the, the usable acreage for agricultural, what is that? Well, we're looking at 19, we're approximately 19 acres in, 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 very, in the very back part there. And, and you know, in the front section, I think we've got around 55 acres in there. And then there's another, there's another three or four acres that won't be used because of the forestry. And um, the, Civil engineer, the, 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 I think it's the civil engineer, they already have let us know about the wetlands and that we can't do anything in the wetlands because of the violation of the wetlands laws. So we are totally aware that there is a total of like 55 acres in the front section and about 19 acres in the back. And I think it's about something like 14, it's, it's, it's approximately 85 to 90, maybe 95 acres of farmland. What would be the value of that at least property? Well, well I, Right, right now, right now, what we what we what we negotiated with them with was the the entire 160.2 acres I believe it is at 31 dollars an acre, and and that would cover whatever usable property that we have. That's why our insurance would cover all their properties instead of just a portion of it in case someone came in with fortune and they they and they stepped off the boundaries of the 55 acres, and therefore they, we would be liable for some kind of loss or something. So. We decided that it'd be better just to lease the entire properties. Um, off the buffers, the, the buffer line and the tree line uh, between the properties, the nearest, the nearest um, property that's, that's it, it within, um, I think it's one one property, the adjoining property, the nearest house is, is, is like 100 feet or something like that. And then everything else is basically set up, but we will really put whatever buffer that we require. 
the end of the year to say, we did want to be able to fund it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Is anyone else would like to speak on behalf? <coughs> My name is John Andy Robinson. By the way, from Fourth Street. I'm actually a local architect, contractor. I actually went in partnership with why I've been developing back in 07. And I just my father here. And uh, when I first got here to Mount Nasa, a lot of all the investors uh, did an in-depth analysis of the property. Uh, there is approximately 85 acres, upland acres, uh, upland acres. Uh, there's a complete buffer that's all there around the park. Uh, even with the western portion where you see the smaller tracks, uh, there's a six acre buffer that's in between those two. The other image that you're seeing there is actually an entrance uh, going back to the property uh, that's approximately a little over 200 feet. So it's a complete buff of wetlands, uh, except on the southern portion of the property. And it's a complete fence that's all the way around the property. But um, initially, uh, by the property being farmed, we didn't go out there and do any clearing, anything like that, just the areas there. Uh, that is up and clear is what we were planning on doing our development. But being with all the politics and so on and so forth, the, the papers uh, wanted to do something with enhancement of life. Uh, I had to actually run about three miles of water and sewer at my expense, pave the road. So it hurt me as a small businessman. And when we were actually rejected on our zoning, it set me back 15 months. So I had actually ended up spending $15,000 a month as a small business owner, and I just couldn't afford it. So my father stepped in, appreciated it. And um, along with why I kept the bill, he said, hey, you know, you got taxes to pay. I said, Dad, I, you know, I'm out here now, just got some work. I said,